Hi, I'm Ollie Wright. I'm a dev tech at NVIDIA and today I'm going to be talking about stalls and hitches in DirectX 12 games. This will be a quick dive into what causes them, how you can find them and how you can avoid them and then try to prevent them happening again in the future. So stalls and hitches are two words for the same thing. They're those those very occasional frames that take a lot longer than the others, so they can break the fluidity of a game. If you're if you have a 60 FPS game, then you need the frames to be delivered in under 16.6 milliseconds consistently. If you even have a single frame that takes 20 milliseconds, maybe, then that can break the fluidity and and hurts the experience. So I'm going to be talking about the frame's critical path. And this is the path through the code where any additional time spent gets added onto the frame time. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean a single thread. The critical path can, uh, can jump between threads. Um, most of the time, we would want our critical path to be on the GPU. We want the CPU to complete the frame in less time than it takes for the GPU to render so that the CPU ends up waiting for the GPU. But it's a little bit more subtle than that. You might have some code that is only on the critical path when it stalls. So if we look at this example here, the critical path is job A and job C, and job B is done in plenty of time, so that's not on the critical path. But if job B were to stall for some reason, if it was to suddenly take a long, long time, then suddenly it will be on the critical path. So this is the kind of thing that I'm talking about. Now, this is blindingly obvious, but don't put things on the critical path that might take a long time. And sometimes things that don't take a very long time, most of the time, occasionally take a very long time. And those are the things that catch people out. <clears throat> and we need to understand those, those things and you need to be aware if they've crept onto your critical path. So how do we know what kind of things might take a long time occasionally, might cause those random, seemingly random stalls and stutters? And this is a really, really good question. And this is really the reason I wanted to make this blog. For some things, it can be obvious, or it can be obvious to some people that they're going to take a long time occasionally. And other things, it's it's less obvious. It's a very broad rule of thumb. You can think of any methods that are on the command list, things like draws, change pipeline state, uh, set descript tables, those kind of things. They're just involved in recording a command list, so they should be very, very fast. Um, but any methods which are on the device, on the D3D device. If you find yourself putting a method, a call to a method on the device that's in part of the, the frame path, then just pause, just take a step back and have a think and say, well, what would happen if this were to, to store? So let's have a, a look at um, two of the biggest culprits, two of the biggest things that we see uh, more frequently than anything else for things that cause stalls. Now the first one is pipeline state creation. And this is not something, this is something that you might not necessarily think might take a long time, particularly if you are a console developer, if you're used to, used to working on consoles. And the reason for this is down to shader compilation. So on, on PC, when you compile a shader using DXC or FXC, that's only doing half of a job. It's compiling to an intermediate language. It's not compiling the shader for the GPU that's in your PC right now, because that shader needs to be able to run on anybody's PC. So the rest of the shader compilation happens when you create the pipeline state. It's the driver that does that shader compilation, and then it does compile for the GPU that's in your machine right now. Now, most of the time, 
this shader compilation is incredibly fast. And this is one of the problems, I think, because it is fast most of the time, pipeline state creations can find themselves on the critical path by accident without people realizing. And there are a couple of reasons why it could take a long time. The first one is how complicated the shader is. Simple shaders will compile faster than complex shaders. And the other thing is shader caching. So the first time you create a pipeline state object, the driver has to compile the shaders. But the second time you compile the same thing, if shader caching is enabled, which it is by default, then that cache will be, the, the shader will be retrieved from the cache. So it will be a lot faster. But it's not something that you should rely on. Now, the other common cause of hitches that might be slightly less obvious are memory operations. So things like creating resources, well, creating committed resources and destroying them, and also creating and destroying heaps. Now, this might be surprising. You might have a memory allocator in your game engine, and you can happily create and destroy thousands of allocations in a frame. So you might think, well, why, why should it be slow? And it's, the answer is it's, it's, it's complicated. It involves the operating system, it involves page tables, and it involves lots of things that I don't understand. But the important thing is to know that it can take a long time. If you have create committed resource or destroy committed resource or heaps on your critical path, it's a potential cause of a hitch. Now, an exception is to use placed resources, create a placed resource, destroy placed resource. They should be fine to put in your frame time because uh, the memory has already been allocated. You're sub-allocating within a previously allocated uh, resource or heap. So what's a good way to know if something bad is on the critical path? Now you should know your critical path, but it might be difficult to make sure that nobody ever puts anything bad on there um, that might occasionally hitch. Uh, so let's look at things that we know are common causes like pipeline state and memory allocation. And here's one, here's a create committed resource. Now, a really, really good tip is to make sure that every occurrence in the code of create committed resource is paired with a function called something like this, like a simulate hitch. And maybe you put a wrapper around create committed resource to do this. Now the job of simulate hitch is to hitch frequently uh, when we're in a, in a development case. So you wouldn't have this code activated in a, in a shipping game. It might look something like this. So, one in 10 times, we will get a long sleep in this code. And the reason this is a good idea is as soon as someone makes a call to this function, this create committed resource function now, that's on the critical path, the game is gonna stall like crazy. And it's gonna be very, very obvious that this has happened so that it can be addressed before it gets too far. So another good way to find hitches is to use a tool. Uh, and Ensight Systems is a really, really good tool for finding this kind of thing. It's a, um, a profiling tool for CPU that works by sampling. So it's a sample based profiling tool. And you can conf configure it so it uses a relatively low sampling frequency. Um, and that enables you to do a very, very long run of the game and capture data from a very, very long run of the game. So if you were able to capture a hitch happening, then you can get good data about it. First thing you get is a, is a, a timeline like this, where it's very, very obvious that you've got um, a hitch and it will, it will show you details about it. And it has common uh, analysis for things that can happen often. So here we've got a hitch that's created by 
create state object. And you can also get a call stack as well. Um, so you can find exactly the path through the code that caused it. That's it. So thinking about hitches and stalls should be part of a game engine's design. If the engine design relies on being able to create pipeline states or do any of these other things within a frame, then it's probably going to hitch and stall and it's probably going to be a bad experience for the user. And it's very easy for me to sit here and say that. And I know that if some of these things get into a design, it can be very difficult to fix sometimes. But that's it. Thank you for watching.